but the monsters turned out to be just trees. When the sun came up, you were looking at me. Hey guys, it's Mr. Jeff. I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, PA. Check out what I found. Light camouflage. Can you see it? Boom. Look at that, pristine. Let me get good shots on this. Can you guys see all that? Hold on. I'm actually trying to get good angle here. Focus. Here we go. Look at those. The grays, tans, almost blue color too, but beautiful specimen. Tremedes versicolor, a.k.a. turkey tail. One of the most popular wild mushrooms on the planet. They even make a chemotherapy drug in Japan out of a substance found in these mushrooms. But that's not what I'm here to show you guys. I want to show you the underside of these. Here, let's go ahead. Take this big old stick here. All right, I'm going to flip it over. Maybe. Ugh. Okay, there. Now you can see the pristine white underside on some of these. There we go. Although I do see there's some brown spots on them. Not sure what's going on. Maybe some bugs. There we go. The underside of Tremedes versicolor has pores, hence why they call these polypores. But did you know that within the genus of Tremedes, I'm talking the cousins of Tremedes versicolor, you have all different sorts of hymenophores or the spore bearing surfaces these have underneath. Some of them have gills, some of them have lab labyrinths, some of them have like the pores like you see there. There's some that have teeth. So let's go check this out. Pardon my artwork this time, guys. Alan Turing got messed up because of a storm that came through last night. So you guess you could say we're bringing him back from the dead because we got zombie Alan Turing today. Check that out. So yeah. Anyway, Alan Turing, famous mathematician, code breaker of world war ii go do some research on him it's unfortunate we lost him at a young age he died when he was my age i'll let you guys learn why i'm not going to go into the politics and the discussions of that but it's a pretty sad story um he could have done a lot of great things for science but politics got in the way anyway so what what did we get from alan turing he proposed that in nature, we would find a mathematical process that would explain all these differentiating shapes. And we call that equation a reaction. Let's see if I can write this nice on the fly here. A reaction diffusion. Equation. What the heck is a reaction diffusion equation? This is just a mathematical way of expressing a concept of two processes spreading out, diffusing, but reacting with each other in a periodic sequence. And hence you get these pattern formations that seemingly occur out of nowhere. Let me break it down a little further. So... I'm kind of stealing this example, I guess, from another show I watched, but they use the example of a forest fire and firefighters. So if you have multiple forest fires appearing, we'll just, we'll just draw little blobs here, all right? Periodically, as these forest fires spread, they're going to grow and get larger, but also as they get larger, Firefighters are called in. Firefighters are going to respond and block their growth any further. So as the firefighters come in and surround, it halts the spread of these circles, leaving them where they are. 
that's a simple way of explaining how you get periodic spots. But how would you get stripes or labyrinthine patterns out of such a thing? Well, if you change the coefficients in the equation, coefficients are our, our starting number. Say we've got so many fires, so many firefighters. If we change the number of fires and lower that number, then you're going to have less diffusion of that particular um, formation because there will be firefighters that come in and abruptly stop it. But if you switched it around and had more fires versus firefighters, or the fire travels at a faster speed than the firefighters can keep up with, see, as you change these numbers, different patterns are going to um, play out. Or you get larger spots or circles or stripes or other wave-type formations start appearing. All due to a simple mathematical formula, guys. Hey, let's play a game. So I drew these different touring patterns that are found in nature on the side of my truck here. Um, the weather washed it off, so I'm just going to voice over here, but follow with me. So of these nine different touring patterns, do you recognize any of these found in nature, whether they be in the animal, plant, or fungal kingdoms? Leave a comment if you recognize any of them. I'm going to give the easy one away so you guys can't just fall on this. But the upper right corner is the zebra stripe pattern. I just turned it sideways. It's horizontal. But does anybody know what that upper left is? Hint, it's found in the ocean. And that pattern is also found in one of the Tremedes species here. We're going to see shortly. So back to the fungal genus I was speaking of earlier at the beginning of the video, Tremedes. Tremedes is a genus of polypore mushrooms, but they don't all have pores. So that name can be a misnomer, but it's very common for us to take morphology in nature. I'm talking about the shape of something and assume that that shape is expressed continuously through the genetics or through that family. When truth is many times shapes in nature are such a simple formula, a simple mathematical process that determines shape differentiation that you can have a variety of shapes all within the same family or sh same genus. So it doesn't take much diverging, evolutionarily speaking, we'll say, to come up with such great pieces of art. So let's check this out. All within the fungal genus Tremedes, as I just mentioned. Man, I got a lot of glare. There we go. Can you see that? Tremedes versicolor, like the one we found in the woods earlier in the video have a poroid or pore-like hymenophore. Did I explain what a hymenophore was? No, I didn't. So a hymenophore, let me write this really quick. We are switching things up on you guys. We'll come back. The hymenophore, big fancy word here. Can you guys see that? There it is. The hymenoph hymenophore is the surface of the mushroom that's going to have the hymenium. That's the spore bearing components. Well, where do you find the spores on mushrooms? Usually underneath if it's got a cap, right? Or if it's a shelf mushroom, it's gonna have the underside on that too. Some mushrooms have its spore bearing surface, the hymenium on the outside of it, like lion's mane. So the part of the mushroom that contains the hymenium is called the hymenophore. Hymenium would be like your the surface of the gills, surface of the inner lining of your pores. That's the surface, that's your hymenium. But the whole collection of where all the hymenia is located is your hymenophore. There you go, you just got scienced. Anyway, so these touring patterns are found on the hymenophores of these different species of Tremedes. That's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, we've got our poroid hymenophore, herpicoid. What the heck is Urpicoid? It's named after a genus called Urpex, which have, it's a crust fungus that has these little teeth-like extensions. Instead of having pores, it's almost like irregular flattened teeth that are laying down. I tried my best to capture that in the artwork there. Anyway, on to the next one. Hexagonoid, like the name suggests, it's a honeycomb formation. Repeated, regular, six-sided. Very similar to poroid, just larger. And actually, you can see the hexagonal shapes on 
I didn't even mention the names of these, but you can kind of see here as I go. These are all Tremedes, different species in the genus Tremedes. Flavaloid, you could consider this like a lattice. You find this in Tremedes apiaria, but I know it, I recognize this more from the misnomer hexagonal poured polypore, which isn't hexagonal, it's actually lattice like. And that's actually where it's getting the name, where we come up with the name flavaloid, because flavalis is your hexagonal poured polypore. But you get that formation. And the pores will come right out from inside these things. If you can imagine these formations, I'm talking on the underside of the caps. We're looking at the underside of the caps right now, these pictures here. Anyway, this is a really cool one. This might be one of my favorite hymenophore morphologies found in the fungal kingdom is this style. We call this the daedalioid. I can't even say the word. Daedalioid. Can you say that with me? Daedalioid. And that's from the, the Greek mythology story of the guy Daedalus who made the wings and tried to fly. Wasn't that him? No, that was somebody else. That was Icarus. Daedalus was the guy in the maze. Duh. Hence the labyrinth pattern here. So Daedalus got lost in a maze. No, he was the designer of the maze. Is that right? Hey, I'm not the Greek mythology scholar here. Anyway, Daedalioid morphology refers to that labyrinthine design where you get the patterns that almost look like stripes but they're broken up so you don't get quite circles you don't get quite stripes you get this interwoven mixture of the two i suppose and then that's found in tremides flacosa anyway getting on to this is probably the last jump you get to before you get to full stripes like actual gills would be are these gill-like structures you find in Tremedes betulina, the gilled polypore. You'll notice the lines don't go straight from the center out as I tried to make it somewhat radiating from this corner here, but they somewhat break up, some start, some stop, some split off of each other. And I gave that this lent lensitoid formation name because of Another species, what is it, the Lensites, that has the same type of formation there? So anyway, some of these names matter not to you so much as it does to me. But the idea that I'm trying to express here is if you, that you've got all these different morphologies found in one genus. What's my whole point? Well, what about the Russula mushrooms, the cap and stem mushroom that has gills, but they have genetically shown this mushroom to be more related to your polypore mushrooms. All those polypore mushrooms that we find in the woods, closer related to, or rustlers are more closely related to them than they are the other cap and stem agaricoid style mushrooms that we find. And literally that's what got me started on this hunt of how is it that you can have a gilled mushroom family closer related to all these poured mushrooms than the rest of the gilled ones. It must mean that the gills is not a big significant factor in their relationships. And sure enough, I believe that's the case here I'm trying to present. Is I guess my hypothesis is all your hymenophore formations comes down to a basic mathematical formula that was expressed by Alan Turing. He discovered it in other natural processes like stripes and zebras and spots on leopards. But I'm taking it and I'm just bridging a gap saying in the fungal kingdom, we find these same reaction diffusion equations, I bet. If you go on to a molecular level, you'll probably find the same thing happening that as those mushrooms are growing. I'm talking on a cellular level, each cell dividing the mitosis, they keep dividing. And as they differentiate into whatever they're going to be, the hymenophore, say it's the gills, right? Here, let's draw this. I've got room to draw. Here we go. So if you can imagine a cross section of the gills going like this, come on, work with me here. Okay, going up. This is a cross section of a gill sliced. And then the next gill, right? And then the next gill. Speaking of hymenophore and hymeniums, I might as well explain to you, the hymenium is this surface. The hymenophore is this whole thing. 
okay? All the gills together, that's your hymenophore, but the hymenium is the surface where the spores are released. They're released off the surface, and this is upside down, of course, so imagine it pointing down, but the spores would drop out and fall out. They get launched out and fall out here. They do the same thing coming out of pores and coming out of the, coming out of all these. What you notice here is you have differences. You have highs and low spots. The differentiations and the gaps all matter for these different species because of the, um, the distance. We're talking like micrometers here, right? The distance that they launch the spores off the surface of the hymenium out. If they launch it too far, they'd launch it right to the next gill or the next pore surface, and it wouldn't actually discharge. So the gaps have to be lined up just perfect for maximal spore dispersion. And that's all down to simple mathematical formulas that are most likely encoded in the DNA, I imagine. But just a simple change in the, in the mathematical coding could change the frequencies of these occurring or gaps coming in between some of these lines that would break up what would normally be gills could be broken up into smaller fragments or ended up being teeth or the reversal being pores. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one fascinated by this, by the morphology of hymenophores in the fungal kingdom and how it relates to touring patterns. But if you like to nerd out on this nature kind of stuff with me, you're fascinated by some of this stuff. Hey, subscribe to this channel. Um, hit the like button. Help the video get out there. Help my channel grow. I'm almost to 1,500 subscribers, so I just timestamped this video. So I can go back and look at it and see where we are maybe next year from now. But until then, peace. Long stem. And a tiny, tiny cap with gills.